All right, looking good. Everything's good. In three. All right, <laughs> action, right? <laughs> this is a a devotional, a three hundred sixty-five day devotional from Max Lucado's book. God is with you every day. Ah, uh, yes, 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 and He was absolutely with me today. Tell you the truth. When you start your day off or start your work day off and you get God involved, I don't know if this would be good. This would be good. <sighs> day goes like super awesome, smooth, better than before. I tell you the truth, just when I showed up at 10.30, it was a little late. It had an ant situation. Have you ever had ants leaving out cat food and ants got all over it? So there's a big ant, so I had to make sure to take care of that. So maybe I was 10 minutes late. Uh, but, yeah, I don't like sitting. But put me a little behind, but they always show, everybody shows grace, it's cool. It's cool, it, they remember, but they show grace, because every once in a while, everybody's going to be a little bit late. But just, everybody, even the pro athletes, Josephus was super positive today and cool. I guess I'm opening up a little bit, but you can see I'm super, I'm professional, but cool, but still a coach, you know, still got to, they were really positive doing max lifts today and uh, the young lady and Josephus and wow they were very cool and that that worked out well I was just myself and Steve was good and Willow was cool and Evan was cool and then break went good but right before I clocked in I met with somebody that's really really special to me I haven't known her long but she's cool and you know knocked on the door and she invited me in and we sat down and it's her office overlooking the the parking lot the NTC parking lot and she's the outpatient nutritionist but let me talk about the presentation we talked pre we talked shortly about the presentation she was just doing on her computer about giving a talk on uh, diabetes I think for for older population uh, at one of the local churches I guess for Southlake Hospital, but it went to Romans 12. She sent me a text about Romans 12, and right there in her office, two Christians is talking about Romans 12 and what Romans 12 about using our gifts kind of wherever we're at, whatever our gift is, to, to use it. Use it with faith that that's your gift, and use it, and use it well, and do it well, and glorify God, and you will be fulfilling His plan and purpose. And uh, just be you, right? And I talked about that. So we're able to talk there for about 10 minutes. And people are passing by. We left the door open. Uh, but, yeah, it's perfect. So ministry can definitely be brought into work um, very well. And God shows up wherever I go because I know he's with me all day. I mean, he leaves us the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit dwells within all of us who have surrendered to that are Christian. So it's really, really cool. So you just got to believe this stuff. It's uh, incredible how God works and what people he puts in your life to strengthen and encourage you. Though some people can let you down sometimes. I guess we're not perfect, but they just need to, to really fine-tune or get their focus right. Because everybody does... Um, it's a personal relationship with God, but some of us, you gotta be 100% in. And if your work doesn't allow you to do that, to be 100% or your wife or family or some hobby you got, if you're just feeling a little bit off, I'd get rid of that hobby or I'd change work hours. I just, wow, it's God first, serving God, loving your God, and loving your neighbor as yourself. And as I always say, family's a blessing, kids are a blessing. God first, take care of those kids and the family, uh, in that order, no, okay, I mean, <laughs> you got to, it's a blessing, and uh, if you're good at it, you'll get blessed with more, good at that, yeah, you can have as many as 20 kids, <laughs> God will provide, as long as you raise them, raise them early, to, to seek God and his kingdom, and when they get older, they will not depart, they will not leave they will seek God and they would do the same thing and the same thing with their children and then generation to generation it's just a big pyramid scheme right it's a good one though a great one there's some other 
good pyramid schemes, but this is the ultimate pyramid. And it's not really a scheme, it's just a, it's a business model God has. You know, him being at the top, but, and it just flares out, flares out until it gets so big. Uh, the pyramid. Great. Tell two friends, they tell two friends, they tell two friends. Jesus is the best investment that you can have. Because then it spreads, and that's all we're supposed to do. And is now go tell all the nations, go tell them the good news, the gospel, what you've seen, what you've witnessed, what you've heard, uh, what's happened in your life. So, pretty darn cool. So remember that. So, it was glory to glory to glory today, from clocking in and postural assessments that went really cool, and wow, yeah, everything went cool and. Appointments with Nasir. I'm going to change his life and he's going to change my life. And I'm going to help him however I can. In whatever way. Fitness or health related. But uh, yeah. How everybody is an intricate part of our life. And according to God's plan. Hey hey, Jeremy in about five months I'm going to send you this guy. His name's in Nasir and I want you to help him. Okay. God didn't tell me that. But he made it to me somehow. And uh, yeah. Isn't that interesting. In about half a year, there's going to be this female that's looking to get married. And I'm going to need you, you'll notice. And uh, I want you to remain patient and obedient. and But still start um, start uh, showing interest. You will, because I know what the desires of your heart are. Right? That's kind of how God would be, because he's cool like that, right? But uh, only to those... Only to those that are that wait on him and are obedient to him and have the faith will he give you these blessings. The best of the best. Not settling for stuff. It's amazing. And your days end up the best of the best where it probably couldn't have went any better. You can't really think of a way that it could have been better. That, oh, maybe I should have isolated myself in the office today. Or I should have, instead of running by myself, go uh, run with a co-worker or another member of the gym. Or... Go talk to this person or go do this. It's amazing. God is amazing. And you'll figure that out. you figure it out on your own if you want. So, alright. Let's see. Let's see. Keep the power supply open. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Romans 8, 26. All of Romans 8 is equal. It's awesome. The Holy Spirit is not enthusiasm, compassion, or bravado. He might simulate such emotions, but he himself is a person. He determines in itineraries. Acts 16.6 6. Distributes spiritual gifts. Romans 12.2 1 Corinthians 12.7 And selects church leaders. Acts 13. He teaches in John 14.26 And guides in John 16.13 And comforts. John 16.7 he dwells with you and will be in you. John 14, 17. Occasionally, guest. Occasional guest? No, not at all. The Holy Spirit is a year-round resident in the hearts of his children. As God's story becomes our story, his powers become our powers. Then why do we suffer from power failures? We're prone to depend on God's Spirit to save us, but not to sustain us. We're like the Galatians whom Paul asked, After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Galatians 3, 3. We turn to Him to get us started and continue in our own strength. The same hand that pushes the rock from the tomb can shove away your doubt. The same power that stirred the still heart of Christ can stir your flagging faith. The same streak that puts Satan on his heels can and will defeat Satan in your life. Just keep the power supply open. Seek God and his kingdom. Seek God and his kingdom first. Staying focused on God. Romans 8. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. That's exactly what I was talking about. Um, spiritual gifts and meeting people and just being yourselves. Because as I always say... You were all unique, and we're all part of the body of Christ, and we have unique gifts that uh, that forms the body of Christ. He's the head, and we're all the extremities, all the appendages, even the heart. I say some, 
sometimes. Um, mm, the people that really are good at love, unconditional love, they're the heart. But most of the time we're, we're gifted in many ways, but we need to fine-tune that, and that's why we stay in prayer. One of the reasons we stay in prayer, right? Cool. All right, let's check out Romans 8. Romans 8 is going to get crazy. I'm going to... Should I read the whole thing? Time that. Oh, man. Yeah, eight minutes. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of a sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in a sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile of God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he will, <laughs> he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory, we must continue. Future glory. This is when it gets emotional. You can feel it now. Future glory. Because this is truth. I told you it's truth. Just read it and read it and read it and read it again. This is probably a thousand times that I've read this. I consider that all of our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that we that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemptions of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who, who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes with, no, for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know, that in all things God works for the good of those who love them, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? 
He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will we not be also along with him graciously give us all things? How will, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is that that condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for the sake we face death all day long, we are considered to as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8. Don't have to say any more. It's all right there. Preachers don't even have to preach their own sermons. They could just read that and explain it. And explain a little bit. Paul did it for you. He preached the sermon. We make up our own sermons when sometimes we just need to be reading that and maybe explaining a little bit what that means. But I think you got it. Because I got it. Because ah, I was baptized, I was saved and baptized, and the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. We get, we understand what that says. And we groan for that inwardly for that and more of it. So that's what we we hunger for. That's what we thirst for. That's what we thrive and live off of, you know? So we understand it. But sometimes to a person that hasn't been saved or totally surrendered, can you be halfway surrendered? Yeah, you can be on the fence. But when you're on the fence, you still belong to the devil. You're with the king of the air, with the lord of the air, Satan the enemy so it's not good to be on the fence fences are usually spiky too i've been on fences about to hop and they're pretty spiky and that's not comfortable because then all of a sudden you have to balance and all that and you're trying to choose and you're wasting a lot of time and being on the fence is no fun so on the fence is with the enemy but god runs to us with open arms